My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Good evening, everyone. I'm not Jody, and my partner is not Diane. So I hope you're not too disappointed, but we're here to entertain you. Say hello, Stacy. Hello, (laughs) Stacy. How did I know you were going to say that? Um, You know me well. (laughs) Because I know you too well. We've got the air boss standing by with us, Um, Rick Robinson. Say hi, Rick, since you're there. Hey, everybody. It's me again. You just heard me last hour. Uh, right, exactly. So he was hanging in with us because we are, um, we kind of have a new system set up here. Uh, just to, you know, share with you how the sausage is made a little bit. And I was a little nervous that it wasn't going to work out. But we are live, and I am really, really happy about that. So, um, you know, I'm your, your Wednesday night producer. Sometimes, uh, sometimes here and sometimes not. Lou, 
really happy to be here with you guys. And sorry that Di and Jody couldn't make it, but um, we hope that we're going to keep you laughing a little bit. So, um, you know, stick around as long as you want to, Air Boss. It's going to be interesting, but if, if you got to jump off, you can jump off anytime. Just say goodbye. Don't just leave us hanging. Oh, no, I'm feeling all <laughs> because I, I can actually um, turn off my audio catcher and I can start cutting audio for the next couple hours while I'm talking with you guys because I don't have to run the board. <laughs> uh, well, yay me. Um, you know, any any little little bit of help I can provide. So, yeah, so we're really, really happy to be here. And uh, Stacy, I'm going to let you start, right? So, sure. yeah, you, you start, you pick your first topic and go. Oh, let's go with immigration. Oh, yeah, right. That's Immigration, because our mainstream media is so freaking awesome. Right, I know. They get, they get everything right, don't they? They never uh, get anything wrong. Yeah. Right. So, basically, the Trump administration put out today their policies to put an end to the concept of birthright citizenship. Now, mind you, there are already laws governing children of citizens and non-citizens and residents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what they did was before a child is born, a parent has to have legal permanent residency in the United States for that child to be eligible for citizenship. And it's for like a period of five years. It's not a short period of time. And it doesn't have to be consecutive. It can have breaks in it, but it has to be a total of five years of somebody living there as a legal permanent resident, which means you can't walk over the border, drop a baby, and have it be an American citizen. Finally. That's what, uh, that's what the regulations that were put out today were meant to do. So, if you take a look, those go back to a 2001 law under immigration and naturalization of children, right? It was passed in 2001. And there's two sections in there about children who are born or adopted outside of the country. There's section 320 and 322. However, our, our firefighters who are just so concerned with providing us the truth read these regulations and said, oh my God, Children of active military born overseas are no longer going to be considered citizens until they apply for citizenship through this process under 322. Well, the final ruling just came out from Acting Director uh, Ken Cusinelli, and he said, here is the statement I promise. One of three. The policy manual update today does not reflect who is born a U.S. citizen, period. It only affects children who were born outside the U.S. and were not U.S. citizens. This does not impact birthright citizenship. The policy update doesn't deny citizenship to the children of U.S. government employees or members of the military born abroad. This policy aligns with USCIS's process with the Department of State's procedures for these children. That's it. Period. Background in next week. U.S. laws allow children to acquire U.S. citizenship other than through the birth through birth in the U.S. Children born outside of the U.S. to U.S. citizen parent or parents may be a U.S. citizen at birth under INA 301 or 309 or before the age of 18, their U.S. citizen's parents under INA 320 or 322. So... It, didn't re it, it absolutely does not affect children born to active mi military overseas or active government employees serving overseas. But, of course, the mainstream media reads the paragraph, doesn't look at the reference, um, the reference law, right, under the, under the 2001 Act. And they just go, boo gods. And before you know it, you have people melting down all over Twitter that children born to U.S. military serve people in service of the U.S. military are no longer citizens. Mass hysteria for nothing. For nothing. For nothing. And we can thank, we can thank, I believe the tweet originated with NBC, at least it was the first one I saw that Ken Dinlan, I, I can never get his name right, um, had to delete because he had to say he was wrong. But you know. Oh no, not NBC. Tweet, not NBC, they're so nonpartisan. I know. But, you know, the first tweet that has this shocking information, you know, gets 40,000 retweets as usual, 
And the correction gets 143. Yeah, the the and what's interesting about NBC is you know that they're a serious news outlet because their intelligence community talking head is John Brennan. Well, almost as serious as CNN. I mean, come on. The I know, FBI right? Talking head is Andrew it, McCabe. I know, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So McCabe and Brennan, NBC, CNN. You know, it's all the same thing. Where is where's where's the other one? Clapper, Clapper, I think is also yeah. He's he's at MSNBC. He at MSNBC, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of really awesome people they're bringing on. But you know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders can't join Fox, and God forbid, Sean Spicer go on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, that's hilarious! And his attitude about the whole thing is really funny too. But you know, this is a red wine, so we can get off topic as much as we want to, because it's the red wine. Dad gummy. Well, the reason the regs that were put out today are important is it really does align who becomes a citizen in this country through their parents, right? Yep. The citizen or citizenship or status of their parents and aligns it with the law and the State Department rule. Now, if we want to all go to court over the 14th Amendment, we can do that, right? And we probably the will. Trump admin- the Trump administration hasn't done anything wrong here. No. Other than, other than, um, kind of put a hard end to some of our more egregious incentives for people to grab a child, theirs or not, and drag them to our border. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think that underscores the Trump administration, both the Trump administration, well, the Trump administration, especially within immigration services, border control, um, and and the way that they're addressing aggressively, more so than any administration I can remember, Mm -hmm. human trafficking and child trafficking. They, right, and even many trafficking experts, people in the nonprofit space, are lauding this administration for doing just that. And a lot of those really tend to lean left. Right, yeah. These are not conservative groups at all. They, mm-hmm. they're, they're in the nonprofit space. They are, you know, socially liberal groups, some of them, and, and at least... You know, at least a little left of center, possibly. But they are lauding this. They're they're at least fair enough that they can give credit where credit is due. Lauding this well, administration for the good work that they've done in that area. But, right. So they've taken on citizenship, the citizenship question. Um, they've also said they're no longer, they've just abandoned the Flores settlement. For those of you who don't understand what the Flores settlement is, that means... If somebody crosses the border with a child and they're detained, the child cannot be detained for more than 20 days. So we did the horrific thing earlier in the administration where we would place the child with relatives or in in the care of the state while the parent awaited. And, oh, my God, we couldn't do that. We're separating families. We're separating families. Okay. So then we just were back to catch and release like we were under Obama. The Flores settlement is a huge hole in our immigration process. And it also contributed a lot to um, human or child trafficking. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, they were doing testing, cheek swab testing at the border, and at least at the El Paso station, thirty uh, percent of the children brought over the border were not with a related adult. Right. And we have documented cases of them being recycled. So they get here with one adult, they get sent home and come back with another adult. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it, it, it has, they, they put us in a position where as a government, and as a government, we're an elected government, you know, we're a republic, that, so as a people, we were, we're contributing to supporting and propping up child trafficking industries, particular, mm-hmm. particularly in Mexico, but also across the border, you know, internationally and globally. And that's a, that should not be okay with anybody. So this, you know, this, this so is it's g- totally okay with the Democrats. They don't even acknowledge it's a problem. It's not okay. And it's not okay. And this has got, this conversation's gotten really dark. So let's maybe 
move on well, to the next can we topic. Get, can we go to the other one that I want them to do? Yes, yeah. Please share the, the yeah. policy that so, you want them to amidst do. Amidst all this, because there was actually three. We had the we had the citizenship. We had the no, no longer doing Flores, and the third one left me. But there's been a fourth one talked about that I think we should be encouraging the administration to do. Um, and that is, at one point, they were talking about the asylum rules and how you get to claim asylum for those people don't know at this point if you come across the border no matter where you come across and you surrender to a customs border agent um and make an asylum claim if you are released into into the country um while that's being adjudicated within six months you can get a work permit what they're now contemplating is that only allowing people who claim asylum at a port of entry to get those work permits, which I think is a fantastic idea because we have several reports over the last year, year and a half, with these increase in migrant families, you know, the migrant caravans, then they got real efficient and just bringing them on up and refurbished school buses and, and a whole bunch of other methods. They would bring them to these remote parts of the border, and the custom and border parole agents would arrive, they would be occupied with, you know, 100, 150 men, women, and children, migrant families, and they would be well aware that very close, sometimes even within sight, the cartels are trafficking drugs over the border using these families, women, and children as cover. So I think once you start removing the benefits of claiming asylum at any point along our border and say you're only going to get a benefit for doing that If you do it at a port of entry, um, the traffic of those family groups over the remote parts of our border is going to go down, um, which is going to make it easier for Customs and Border Patrol to do drug interdiction. And the other thing it will cut down on is some of these more tragic stories where a very ill child or person has crossed at a very remote place and become worse and sometimes even died because of the distance they have to go to get medical care. Yeah, I I think that's a really valid policy. I would be, you know, I'd be very supportive of it. I think I agree with you. I'd like for them to do it. So, speaking of children, um, you can argue whether college-age kids, especially new college students, freshmen, are children or not. But, Stacy, I think, will, will say that um, especially when your youngest went to college, she was still your baby. No? no their frontal lobes are surely not fully formed. <laughs> well, there's that too, right? So right. There's... Legally, they might be an adult, but emotionally, they still got a little growing up. Right, exactly. So let's listen to um, a clip from Fox News uh, about something that's going on with college kids. more worry than the account run by a student group threatened to dox incoming students who join conservative student groups posting in part if you join YCT or Turning Point USA your name and more could end up on an article like th- like one of these so make sure to make smart choices campus reform went to Texas for UT Austin's freshman orientation to get students reaction to the threat not cool with doxing. Seems, Seems like, like a, a low blow. Okay, I gotta start that over because I don't think you guys could hear it. As conservative students arrived yeah, on campus could. at the University of Texas Austin, they faced more worry than the usual freshman frenzy. In June, a Twitter account run by a student group threatened to dox incoming students who join conservative student groups. Posting, in part, if you join YCT or Turning Point USA, your name and more could end up on an article like th- like one of these. So make sure to make smart choices. Campus Reform went to Texas for UT Austin's freshman orientation to get students' reaction to the threat. Not cool with doxing. Seems like a low blow to just call somebody out for what their opinion is. I mean, this is a great school. You should be able to express your views as a whole, whether you're conservative or super liberal. I'm not conservative. I'm actually quite liberal, but I I don't think that's cool. 
Well, you just saw Cabot Phillips in that video, and he is the media director for campusreform.org, and he joins us now. Good morning to you, Cabot. Thanks for having me on. That, that young lady said she didn't think they would actually do it, but you and I know good and well that it can happen, and it has happened a lot. Yeah, and it's absolutely a growing trend, and it was encouraging to see most students come out and admit doxing is wrong regardless of the purpose and sadly it is becoming more and more common it's not just something that's on the fringes of the party we've got democratic members of congress using doxing to intimidate supporters of president trump as we reported at the leadership institute's campus forum other professors around the country coming out doxing students for their support of border patrol ice other conservative causes like that and I think that it's important that whenever this does arise, especially in an age of so little ideological diversity on campus, we need to make sure that universities are letting students know if you have an opinion that's not popular, we're still going to protect it. We're not going to let people threaten you for your ideas. And I think that's how you shut this kind of mentality down before it becomes even more common. We need to come together as a country uh, and, and as universities and make sure we shut this down. All right. So... Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, our audience is probably exclusively from Twitter. We've all seen a lot of doxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, been there, done that. It's not a lot of fun. It's not a lot of fun, you know. Usually, family members get drugged into it. All sorts of things get to get, you know, happen. People say the most horrible things about you, and of course, you you can count on because of why these kids are being doxed, right? They're they're going to be called racist and all so sorts of horrible, horrible names. It's a, a mob mentality is surely to take over. Um, really disappointed to see this coming out of the university, it, a university in Texas, um, especially a public university. But I have to say, to this point, the university did take appropriate steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, good for them. They got. They, uh, you know, came out and said this is absolutely not appropriate behavior in a public statement and said that they had been in touch with the attorney general's office to make sure that they were doing everything that they could do to ensure student safety. Um, and I think, you know, seeing the interviews that Campus Reform did with the kids on campus at least gave me a little bit of heart. But what was actually disclosed, which is different from what was said in the initial report, is this group is not on campus. It may have students from campus affiliated with it, but it's like Antifa-ish. Well, that's and good it's an off-campus group. But I guess what concerns me more, right, is whether the tacit approval of this kind of behavior is coming from, because it's been being done for a while, and it's being done by our media. It's it, it, that they that is the most disturbing thing about it is that um, people of this age, or if they're an off camp, campus group, there's no telling what their age actually is. But pe right. people in general are learning this tactic from the media because dosing on Twitter has been going. This is even more disturbing. The media picked it up from social media. You know, it was it's been happening on Twitter forever. Now and and the media picked it up and used it as it purely as an intimidation tactic. You know our our free our free media, our wonderful First Amendment supported wonderful media, person. right? Exactly. And well, but I mean, if you stop and think about it, the first case of this, right, was really Joe the Plumber back in two thousand eight, before Twitter really got you know rolling and, and all of that stuff. Well, oh, that's dude true. Literally, dude literally asked Barack Obama a question about taxes and had his entire life ruined. Yep, that is that is absolutely true, and that's a really good point. He, you know, and then we had Brendan the Ike, the, the CEO of Mozilla. Somebody dug into him because they figured out he was a conservative, figured out he had given, I think, I mean, not even big, right? It was like a $5,000 donation to a pro-traditional marriage group when Prop, I think it was Prop 8 was going in California. He had to leave his position, start all over again. Now he's over at Brave. That's wonderful for him. But, I mean, look what they did to the Covington kid. Yep. I mean, literally kid being approached by this whack Native American, right? I mean, the dude's whacked. 
yeah. trying to just like smile and say like whatever dude whatever uh-huh and they are vilified throughout the entire mainstream media for days and that you know and that's where that is where we started so we the, this it's an off campus group we don't know what their ages are they're very likely adults and not college kids at all but they're going to dox these college kids they doxed that that kid in what was he 15 they have no compulsion Our whatsoever city. Right, so they have, they have, they're, they don't hesitate, they don't hesitate to dox Mm. children, they didn't, right, exactly, they don't hesitate to, I, I mean, they'll go after someone they hate, they'll go after their children. They They went after some stupid Twitter troll because he made a funny meme of President Trump knocking out the CNN logo. Yep. He goes, oh my God, oh my God, the press is at risk, freedom of the press, we're under threat. Uh-huh. Oh, you're in an air-conditioned office in New York City, shut up. Right, exactly. My First Amendment. That, you you're can... not alone on the UT campus after being doxxed by some off-campus group as a conservative and being smeared as a racist and a Nazi, Right. Very few of them. From the library, getting the crap beat out of you. Right. The same people that very, very few of them had any problem whatsoever with what happened to Cheryl Atkinson or Mm -mm. James Rosen. Nope. They barely spoke out. I think a few of them did. And most of them are. And then we found out there were like more. I mean, there were wiretaps at the AP. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about an administration that was really trying to intimidate the press? Uh, can we talk about Barack Obama? Right, exactly, exactly. Thank show me, know. show me a Trump administration FISA warrant for a journalist communications, and then mm-hmm. I, and then I'll listen to your crap about the First Amendment being under fire because you're you're freer now. You get more of his time. You get more of his candor, and you know this is coming from somebody who's pretty agnostic about the guy. You know, right. don't but, at this point don't love him, don't hate him, but you know I'm definitely not running around with the MAGA hat. I mean, it, neither am I, but I'm not gonna lie. I like it. Like if he gets some of this stuff done on the border. Oh, at at, at this point, applause. yeah, at this point I'll applaud him just because you know everything that he does accomplish is a spit in the eye for the dirty, you know what's that. Yeah, yeah, that did the dirty, dirty deeds that they did dirty. to try to keep him out of office. Did but, I mean, a soft, soft coups are not allowed in this country. Sorry. So I mean, you know, we went through the Covington kids, Kyle Kashev, you know, this kid, this dude who made a meme, you know, that CNN didn't like, and all this. So this week, this was my favorite story of the week because I, I just I love overly dramatic people. I'm like, are you serious? Um. There was a story in the New York Times which was framed as this horrible, horrible thing. Apparently some Trump-supporting people, and I believe they're led by Arthur Schwartz, who is not part of the administration, um, had decided after all of these other things were going on, right, where the media is doxing people and Joaquin Joaquin, uh, Castro is is trying to intimidate Trump supporters by tweeting it out to all his followers. Right. He needed to... um, that they needed to go ahead and start going through the media's old communications, so their public statements, their tweets, et cetera, et cetera. Something Media Matters has been doing for years, and CNN, and MSNBC, and NBC, and the Wall- and, and the New York Times, and all these other, take this information from Media Matters, and they print it, and they, they, they join in the pylon, right? Yeah. So now somebody's saying, your rules, we're going to play by them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the New York Times melted down. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. The statement from the editor. Oh, my God. I read it. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. He's like, we're fearless and we're not going to be cowed. And I'm like, yes, as you're sitting in your air-conditioned office. Mm-hmm. Like, right. you want to know where your journalists are actually at risk, New York Times? Maybe the ones reporting from China or Russia or the Middle East, 
not the people sitting in the ivory tower in New York City, just sitting there creating Russia, 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 racism, 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 recession, recession, recession. Yeah, exactly. The R words. Okay, we need to take a break. All right. Yeah, and um, but we'll find something else to rant about when we come back. All righty. All righty. LRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive rate shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a rate shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie-style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap, and she takes the bite! Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six-inch sub. I'm Little Teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, and here is my spout. No, no, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Okay, we're back, and good news is Jody will be with us here in just a moment, so we're really excited about that. Um, we are going to, I don't know, should I wait for Jody to come back to play the play the clip? I want to make sure she hears it. Sure, like maybe we can just put some context to it. And, you know, there was yeah. other news this week, apparently, last night. We're getting to the final deliberations as to whether CNN contributor Andrew McCabe may be charged. Yeah, and there... Um, <laughs> I will <won't> say <laughs> whether CNN... I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping to get indicted on air. I think that would be fantastic. I know, wouldn't it, right? Like, so I want to see Shepard Smith do one of his, like, car chase moments right <laughs> except it's the the you know the the busting uh, the bust of andrew mccabe where the fbi raids his house and it, so think about this so we've all had jobs in our life and we've all had jobs that we left right. so think about being fired from a job and you know six months 12 months nine months later all of your all of your 
former uh, co-workers show up at your house and raid you and take you to jail. Yeah, right. I know. Right. How embarrassing is that, right? One of these guys needs to get raided, though. There needs to be an early morning raid with, oh, I don't know, Fox News there since CNN got to <laughs> Roger Stones, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, Fox. There needs to be an, somebody needs to be picked up at 6 a.m. Right. I really want it to be at 3 p.m., though, so Shepard Shepherd Smith can do, like, one of his car chase things, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So <laughs> they're hovering above head, above head with the helicopter, and, you know, it's, it's live yeah, I, on the news deck and all yeah. that cool stuff. Jeff Smith is a cyborg. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. His All right. voice never wavers. There's no, I mean, it's just like monotone. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's why he's so good at the car chase. Okay, so we're going to listen to this clip from John Solomon, which you probably already know has been covering the heck out of the Trump-Russia hoax story in the investigate the investigators are doing a better they're they're doing a more public job and it seems like they're doing a really great job of it we don't know what durham and those guys are doing but hopefully they're doing at least as good a job as john solomon is he has a lawsuit to try to obtain the documents and information from the ukraine both on joe biden's dealing bit business dealings possible connection between him and the Ukraine's in um, influence on the Trump-Russia activities, hoax, vice of warrants, you name it, and what the Ukraine has admitted to, and so let's listen to John. You are now reporting on the issue of Ukraine, having evidence of them right. admitting you have been reporting on the issue of Ukraine, having evidence of them right. admitting that they helped influence the 2016 election. Does it really yeah. matter if it's Ukraine or Russia? Does it matter if Obama tries to influence the outcome of the Israeli election and have has his people working against our ally, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Um, well, a lot of double standards here, but— That's right. Uh, on the issue of Ukraine, what were they offering the United States in terms of information about 2016 and their <coughs> support of Hillary Clinton to impact the election? Multiple uh, pieces of information, some related to Joe Biden and his son, some related to the Democratic National Committee's effort to get help from the Ukraine embassy in Washington to find dirt on Donald Trump. And third, evidence uh, that people in Ukraine sent to Nelly Orr and other uh, people in the fusion GPS world to try to help the Trump uh, collusion narrative blossom in the United States, even though they really didn't have a factual basis for it. Three separate chains of information that the Ukrainian government has claimed since late last year. They've tried to get to the Trump Justice Department, and nobody there seems to be interested in it. Well, there you go. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, something was happening in the background. I don't know what that was. Hopefully, it wasn't like my system. Because you know how that goes, right, Jody? So, yes. multiple, <laughs> multiple, right? Multiple documents help from the Ukraine to try to get dirt on Trump. He said they admitted to doing that, and he's having to sue to get the information, the information that, and, and the, the Ukraine has information and documents that they're trying to get to the Justice Department, and the Justice Department isn't showing much interest in them. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, it is. It is. I want, I'd like to know what their explanation is. Here's the other thing. I told Stacy this earlier today. I have to wonder how much of this stuff Will, William Barr actually finds out on the news. Like, is he sitting at home watching Sean Hannity going, wait a minute, what? Or, or <laughs> yeah, are, are you telling me that, Chris, what's his name, Christopher Ray? Chris Ray has been offered this information and he hasn't taken it? So it's actually being offered directly into the FBI or DOJ generally? He said the Justice Department, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they've offered it several places. 
You know, he he hasn't, and I looked to see if, if Solomon had written a story on it yet, but like I said, there's a lawsuit. Yeah, I didn't yeah there, there's a lawsuit, so I don't know, you know, what there there may be things that he's being expeditious about not sharing, um, but I, I couldn't find the, any specificity around that, right? So, like, where's the information been offered? Who has the Ukraine reached out to? These are the fascinating things that, you know, we're, I, I'm looking for coming in the future because, you know, those are the things, I'm like you, those are the things I want to know. Who offered it? When was it offered? Who have they offered it to, right? So is Ray, yeah. is Ray the only one that's been offered this information? Is the primary one that's been offered this information? Have they offered it to, to other entities that haven't taken it as well? Why haven't they taken it? Do they already have the information? Do they do they have the information and they think that it conflicts with what the Ukraine? Well, that would make me want it even more. But I, you know, it, it's really fascinating. This whole thing is fascinating. And well, yeah, I mean, this comes on the heels of right the information about the potential Brady violation with um, Maria Bukina. Yes, a potential Brady violation with George Papadopoulos. Yes, I mean. Potential is kind. If you have never, and it, and it may be somewhere on my TL in the last few days, if you have never listened to podcasts between Byron York and Butina's lawyer, it was literally one of the most disturbing things I've ever heard. And now we find out that this guy, former head of Overstock, I can't remember his name, um, that went on TV and is like, no, the FBI approached me to re re-engage with a woman I'd had an on and off affair with and, you know, provide them information. That question was directly asked to the FBI and they said, nope. Right. Yes. Right. So Patrick. either this guy is completely crazy and he's lying or they're lying. And I think we kind of know where, <laughs> where most people are leaning. Well, well but the- if you listen to that interview with Bettina's lawyer, they suspected that was going on back when her her legal process, but back when her trial was going on. Right. They specifically asked because that would have been exculpatory information. And I mean, I, like, why the Federal Bureau of Investigation inside the Department of Justice would risk that, other than the fact they thought they would never be found out. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that they thought that they would never be found out, you know, and that mm-hmm. if, um, exactly. yeah, and it's, it's the, the funny thing is, and it, cause we've seen this like throughout the years is the projection, the projection that seems to have taken place during the campaign. And, you know, we've seen it. We know that it happens. You can easily connect the dots, but the evidence of it is not out yet. I expect it to come out at some point. But we all know that a lot of the disinformation that was being pushed on uh, social media was, and some of this is proven, was coming from, you know, internal domestic sources. It wasn't, you know, the, all those Russian bots weren't, weren't Trump-driven. They were driven from the left, and they were meant to make the Trump campaign look bad. We know that now, right? Right, right. So, I mean, when you look back on it, they were meant to make sure that Trump was the nominee, that all right. of his all of his voters were viewed as scumbags, and then he was supposed to lose the election. We were all supposed to be scared of yeah, being that deplorable. Was, yeah, that was actually that was off. yeah, that was absolutely it, and that was the reason for the whole alt right, you know, Nazi pro pro Trump. That was complete disinformation and propaganda. Well, we that's know that's pushed, like thirty guys. With well, yeah, at, at best. There were a lot more than 30 accounts on Twitter. I know that for a fact, but, like, literally, Charlottesville was 30 fat guys with TV stores. Right, yeah, ab- absolutely. And, and where did they even come from? How do we know that they're even there? Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to get into the right, conspiracy like who's, theories. Who's paying them? Or, or, there, I mean, there's the adorable, part, they, is, the adorable right. part is is the most hysterical organization in the country, Right. The SPLC says that there's about 12,000 white supremacists nationally, okay? Other organizations say maybe somewhere around 6,000. So basically there are 
less white nationalists in this country than the average attendance at a WNBA game. There are far more uh, neo-Nazis in Germany per capita Mm -hmm. than there are white nationalists in the United States per per capita. And the, and, and, I would say in all of Europe, but I mean, you know, let's, we can argue that, but um, you just look at... I mean, they've also been having the mass migration, and the yeah. stresses on the culture in those countries are much bigger than they are here. Well, yes. well, <laughs> maybe most places here, but maybe not all places here, but but at any rate, you know, that's... That it's it's propaganda being driven to make it look and feel and seem as though it's something really scary. It's the politics of hysteria, the politics of fear. And we watched it, to loop back to what we were saying, we watched it, we knew it was happening, we said it at the time, those people aren't real. How many times did we say, those people aren't real? Ricky Vaughn was an account that... I know the three of us discussed he was completely fake, right? right. He was there oh, yeah. he was there to agitate, nothing but an agitator. And what was proven? The guy behind that account was a liberal, no? Right. It, right. it was it's a total fake persona created by the left to create this alt right. Oh, and I'm sure genophilia was too. Oh, so quite a few. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah we could sit here. We could like spend yeah, another really hour. Ones, they were... We could spend another hour listing. But it's even like they proved that people were being paid to go to Trump rallies to stir things up. Right. So that weren't just natural, you know, organic Trump followers going like a lot of people are just going like Diane to a Trump rally. Right, and it's one thing, you know, it's it's one thing to recruit um, protesters that are protesting something that they really believe is wrong, but to recruit someone to impersonate a Trump supporter so that they can misbehave and make all Trump supporters look bad, that's a special kind of devious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and I have no doubt... That that's been going on for years. That people do that kind of a thing for different campaigns. Uh, I, yeah, it, it has a whole lot uglier and sick. yeah, it it has yeah. and and there's and you know on and off throughout time, it's gone I, I, it's gone on at different you know ebbs and flows and sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less. But I said this to Lou earlier. I think the entire freakout, right? Everything that's gone on since November 8th was literally the result of Hillary Clinton not getting what she wanted and a plan oh, yeah. not working out for the first time in her entire life. Yeah, we are caught this in This was a carefully orchestrated plan from how they didn't finish the investigation on her, ignored information about her, like, indiscriminately yep. pushing classified information out. The way they went after Trump, I mean... That whole thing was so orchestrated. I say this every How other Sunday. I say this every other Sunday. I just keep going back to that phone call mm-hmm. from Bill to Donald. You should really oh, run. You should really yeah. run. And all and all of the open primary states uh-huh. where the, yes. the 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 Republican primaries had way more votes than there were there were Republicans in the state. Yep. Mm-hmm. So here Sometimes you get what you wish for. Guess what? Exactly. Guess what, Hillary? Karma. Yeah, karma is a <laughs> karma is a bitch, and her name is Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to know what's interesting too? How would we even know if she had gotten it? We wouldn't we would know, know anything about right. Exactly, because huh. just even think what Judicial Watch has done in getting records. Mm-hmm. We would know nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, there's, we would know nothing. You know and what? The mainstream media has missed the biggest story of government corruption, and yes, it is bigger than Watergate. Yes. Yeah. In I've... our nation's history, I don't think anything 
quite this corrupt has gone on with agencies that are literally supposed to be apolitical. Absolutely. And and the funny thing, and, and you know, I said, <laughs> I said this um, about James Rosen probably about two and a half years ago. The reason he was surveilled had nothing to do with anything that he was covering and everything to do with his book because he uncovered the seedy underbelly and the setup behind Watergate, um, the setup of Mitchell and to some extent the setup of Nixon, because he was, Nixon to some extent was psyoped um, into that cover up. So it, it, that, the, the knowledge that he had and the view that he had into what was about to go on and what was being planned. I believe probably got him his his FISA surveillance more than anything did. But it was a joke. You know, I was joking when I said it. But now, you know, I think about that every now and then and go, you know, I might not have been too far off on that. Um, but Conspiracy theorists. I know, right? It's, you know, okay. just because I think it doesn't, doesn't mean that I'm, you know, it's a religion. But <laughs> no, 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 no. But I have to jump in with something completely unrelated. Okay. I love the Queen of England. <laughs> she just Tell pissed why. off half of her country. Okay, let's, all right, so would we... Uh, Queen Elizabeth has approved a request by Prime Minister Boris Johnson to suspend Parliament, a move that appears to be designed to thwart opposition lawmakers from blocking Brexit, prompting protests in cities across the United Kingdom. The queen is a Brexiteer. Oh my God, that is okay. That is major. That is, this yeah. the, the queen is not suspended. That is like the that is the end of the road. Um, to a no deal Brexit. What? No, it's the end of of the road of of like the the jockeying that goes on within within Parliament. So you know, there's votes of no con. con confidence and those right to, to get to the point where the queen suspends parliament is huge i think she's done it maybe once or twice in history she's had this policy since parliament um since the house of commons has existed she's right. that that is her single ex, um surviving head of state duty she never does this Oh, yeah, I this know. This is huge. Except, here's the thing. I mean, the Queen's like 312. <laughs> right. She's yeah. the Queen of England. Right. She wasn't, the, she wasn't the subservient Queen or Princess of Europe. If anybody, I mean, she went through World War II with Chamberlain. I mean, think of all the things this woman has seen. Right. She was close to Thatcher. If there is, yeah. a, as a political thing, if she does not have nationalistic feelings, I don't know who in that country would. This And this is the interesting thing about the monarchy under this queen. It has very much become the voice of the people. The people in England, for the most part, love the monarchy, right? To, yes. to a yes. great, ex, to a great well, extent. Some of them may not tonight, but... <laughs> well, but some of them are. Let's not forget what the votes were in Brexit. The Brexit vote was huge, right? Now, the cities, within the city of London, maybe not so much. But outside the city of London, they Mm -hmm. are going to love that she did this. Because, number one, she never does it. Number two, they love her anyway. Um, And Number three, they know she's on their side. Exactly. They voted for this. uh, So, yeah, this, I mean, this is really huge. Not, Thanks not, for bringing that to the floor, Stacey. Not, uh, yeah, no, I, it just popped through my thread. Uh, and and um, you know what? Do, do you know, Lou, do you know when she's, or Stacey, do you guys know when she's done this in the past? I don't, I, I only know of one other time. I feel like there might have been a third, but. um Maybe like during the war or something like that. Yeah, I'm Googling it. But, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is There huge. was no bigger threat to democracies across the world than the United Kingdom taking a referendum and Parliament not executing the will of the people. Yes, totally. I, mean, I, I, I forget who the guy's name was. Dave Rubin just interviewed him not too long ago. He's actually of the left. He's a left-leaning libertarian. And he's just like, this, 
this cannot not happen. He so said, I, I, I didn't, this cannot not happen. He said, I didn't vote for Brexit, but we must do Brexit. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, she, the, this story says that there, um, there, there have been protesters outside Westminster, um, calling for her to do this. Um, I love Boris Johnson's hair. It's yeah, magical. and it seems like it, <laughs> I know. It seems like they recently made a change where she actually she used to could do it on her own, and now she actually has to be asked by the prime minister. But I thought that that was also always the case. I think they made maybe some kind of administrative change about how it happens, and and took it just a little bit further away from the queen, or some of the you know took the move the action just a little bit further away from her. So for her to do this now, it's even even bigger. Um, oh my God, Nigel Farage must be doing cartwheels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And oh, I, we're gonna have to I get Raheem on. In a bar tonight, people. Yes. Yeah, so oh my gosh, we need to get Raheem and right. uh, see what he has to say, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I see I'm we're so getting close to the end of the I'm hour so here. We, yeah, we, we are. I really wanted to see. Um, if she had done it before, I know she's done it at least once. It's called royal prerogative. Um, you know, prerogative, apparently. Yeah, prerogative. Or so. I, yeah, I don't. Um, I can't. I don't know. It's, it's fascinating. It's that's yeah. fascinating. The last time a British government asked the monarch to suspend Parliament in order to avoid opposition government opposition to government policy was nineteen. 19- 48, five years before Queen Elizabeth assumed the throne. Yeah, so she personally has never done it before. Huh? All right, well, yeah, we are getting close, and I'd like to personally thank the Queen <laughs> for allowing us to avoid the topic. I was born on the same day as my grandmother. Well, we were going to talk so about Omar. I've been Omar. my entire life. Right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> We were going I love to... that. Have you guys seen that thing on Facebook or on Twitter where it shows her morphing? Because she's had so many pictures her entire life, from the oh time God, she, she was, was a baby. Was uh-uh. Yeah, it's, it's like it. pictures of her her whole life, and it takes like a full minute to watch the clip, but it, it just morphs. Like, it just goes year by year by year until now, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that. I, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that she helped us avoid the whole Elon Omar topic. Because <laughs> Elon, Elon, Elon. On, yeah. Or, we were going to close with that. But now we don't have to because thank the monarch. All hail the queen. All hail the queen. I just, I, I have to go look at Nigel Farage's TL now. I'm serious. Like, I've watched interviews with him. And they have tried to do the same thing to him that they have done to Donald Trump. And he started this move years ago because the EU is unelected, unaccountable, taking too much power, and he wants his country back and to have a say. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't either. And I think it's smart considering, did you see what's just happening in Italy? Uh-huh. That they be, they're being taken over by the very far leftist socialist party? No, um, Lord. Yeah, yeah. So and um, we are we, Italians are not. We are <laughs> out of time. A mess there. Yeah, oh, we yeah. and we are out of time. You guys, ladies, say good night. Good night. Thank you so much, ladies, for taking over the show and helping me out and Diane out. We you were happy to do it. It was fun. We'll do it again. And I'll be back producing next week, and we'll all be back next week. So okay, go, Stacey, tell them where they us. can find you. Uh, you can find me at, at Scott's Fire on Twitter and just about every other social media, including Clout Hub, which y'all should give a try to. And then I write for the Resurgent and NOQ Report. Perfect. Thank you so much for filling in for me. Thanks for listening tonight, you guys. Thanks, you guys. See you Sunday, 10 p.m. Good night.
was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. 